Hello and welcome to another live stream. Another Monday. Here we go. So I thought we would do a Halloween theme. Um, this is an illustration by Adam Manoa. Another one, and uh, I like it a lot. So thought it'd be pretty cool. Let's do it. Okay, just getting my stuff going here. Hey, how's it going? Welcome. I'm trying my mic in a different location. Please let me know if like my if my breathing is too loud or obnoxious, whatever. <laughs> All right, sharing. Okay. And shared. Cool. Thanks, Neil. Hey, for e fam's doing great. Thank you. Sounds okay. All right. As long as I'm not like, because my, my breathing is, it's like right underneath my face instead of up in my face. So hopefully that'll be better. Hopefully it sounds good and it's not in my way. Thanks. This is uh yeah, this, this concept is done by Adam and Noah. I'm excited about it. Okay. So, um, yeah, it, this should go fairly quick, but I'm going to see if I can do a bunch of detail with it. So we'll see how it goes. And I mean, it's just a, it's a pumpkin. It's not really, you know, crazy detail in any way. <laughs> Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. All right. All right, kind of flat on the top, but coming out like this. I've had a, I've had a bit of a, I don't know if you'd call it a cold, but, um, causes me to clear my throat often, so I'll be trying to mute my mic when I do that. Okay, that's where the stem will go, kind of on the front there. And we're going to take this into uh, Sculptors Pro right away today, just because of how detailed it is. <laughs> right, Neil? I, I, yeah, I know you're struggling with it. Um, and I think, I think you keep going back to the, the anatomy lessons on how to make a hand, right? Well, you know, that, that will, it's like that should be secondary and the concept should be first. I know it's confusing. Yeah, in hall. Yeah, it's it's uh it's pretty crazy that way with the whole throat clearing. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, yeah, let's do. Uh, I'm gonna apply this dynamic subdivision right here, and then we're I'm gonna kill the lower subdivision levels. So it's about this density, and then we're going to get Sculptors Pro happening here. Um, let's see. Turn this on, adaptive size off. Turn spotlight projection off. Okay, that's about, that's about right. By the way, I heard lately on a forum that if you buy a Wacom Intuos, ZBrush Core is included. I, I'm not sure if that is, uh, if that's the case or not. I have not seen that deal. How much is ZBrush? It depends on which, which version you get. 
Um, if you just go head over to pixelogic.com, you can check it out. And just say, click on the Get ZBrush button and it'll tell you. Because the price might change when somebody else is watching this recording later, so I don't want to say what it is. Oops, that's not where I want it. I want it more on the base here. Oh, goodness, my throat. I got me some tea to calm my throat down. But it's still pretty hot. All right. And um, if, you've, if this is your first time watching... Uh, this, I, I really like to use Sculptress Pro because it dynamically generates the topology as I work. You can see these triangles. Um, and I'm setting the triangle size based off of this right here, uh, the subdivide size. This is where you set it. And it also depends on your how big your model is in your screen, like your screen space. So um, this is relative to your screen size or your job size, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> oh, hey, what's up, Steven? Apple cider. Yeah, that's another good one. I should put some of that in there, huh? That's a apple cider is a good fall drink for sure. Okay, so now that we have this, I want to do just the base pumpkin and get some of these, uh, these kind of creases happening. So it looks like a pumpkin before I start. <laughs> Let me know if this new mic placement is not good. Okay, I'm gonna turn off symmetry for this first one. Fireball, hey, what's up, Sean? Like fireball, like alcohol, candy, what? <laughs> this looks like a butt. Is it better to buy one ZBrush version over forever or is it better to pay for month I mean ZBrush it depends on what you can afford um it's it's always better to just buy it outright if you can afford it because um typically in the past all all ZBrush updates have been free uh so that's that's a really good value right and if you're paying monthly you're not paying monthly to purchase it, you know, to buy, it, to pay it off. You're just paying almost, it's almost like a rental thing, right? So it's better to, to buy it outright if you can. Okay. I'm going to switch materials just so I can see what the heck I'm doing here. And I don't think I, um, I don't have it loaded. I'm going to go load. Oh, goodness. Stop going away. There we go. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't have this loaded. So I'm going to go grab it from an older, older version. Uh, let's see. There we go. Maybe Zebro Gray. I really like zebra gray and then we'll change this to I, I was going to model this in orange but i think it's kind of throwing me off so i'm going to fill it with a with a white so i can see what's going on <clears throat> hey what's up me okay thanks man I don't know that I've ever modeled a pumpkin before. Have I? I'm trying to think of, I'm like asking myself, have I? <laughs> I can't recall if I have. I, I, I'm, I'm prob I probably have in some, at some point in my, my life. I've sculpted one, but I mean like carved them, you know, plenty of times, but. And I want, I also want to shout out to, uh, uh, Villa Fane Studios. If you guys have ever checked out Villa Fane Studios, that guy can, 
can sculpt like the wind blows and and he has his own like um pumpkin sculpting tools and uh yeah if you if you look up villafane studios it's he he can get out of a carved pumpkin nothing like i've ever seen before just crazy stuff How do you smooth your mesh? Um, I'm holding down shift using, using smooth. But since I have Sculptress Pro turned on, it's actually um, dynamically generating uh, some triangles. So if I turn on wireframe, you can kind of see where it's at. And I'm keeping the triangles fairly large because I'm just kind of in a, almost a block out stage right now. So as, and I'm using a pinch brush to make these, uh, these valleys, right? And when I do, it's actually stretching the geometry and making these weird, like, faceted triangles. So then I will go and I'll use my smooth brush and just kind of go over the top of those just to get rid of the stretching that's happening. Like that. And I could go a little bit smaller with the, uh, with the, with the triangles at this point. But I'm just kind of trying to get... Get just the base shape happening here. What's the name again? The pumpkin guy, Adam Manoa. He's actually a he's he's a good friend of mine, like a local guy in Utah. So I mountain bike with him. He got he kind of got me into mountain biking, and uh, yeah, he just he actually lives almost in the same city. He's one city over from me. About oh. 15 minutes away, maybe. And he does fantastic illustrations. Ray Villafane, thanks, me. Yeah. Oh, that pumpkin. I thought you were talking about this illustration. Uh, Ray Villafane from Villafane Studios. Yeah, check those out. They're, you know what? <clears throat> I hope you guys don't mind. Um, hold on a second. I want to show you some of the pumpkins that that guy can sculpt because they're absurd. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you really quick. Look at these. They so here's here he is right here, Ray. And this is what he does. They're so crazy. Um, there's one one of my favorites is like this. Uh, well, this one's cool. Look at that. It's like being punched. <laughs> he sculpted the cheek being all compressed. There's another one where he's like grabbing his face, trying to find, find that one. So good. And he uses the, the skin as part of the sculpt. They're just insane. So good. I mean, look at this one. That's a pumpkin. Just on some other level. Oh, here it is. Look at this one. Where he's like grabbing the face and squishing it. So, uh, yeah. It's, it's just, it's awesome. This guy is on a different level when it comes to pumpkin sculpting. Yeah, just, just absurd. Wow. I look at him every single time. I'm just like completely blown away every time. It's like, how is that a real pumpkin? All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to crank this subdivision down a little bit. Okay, and then I can just kind of, when I'm smoothing it, it's adding some more detail. I'm just kind of taking it to the next, the next smooth level. What, what, what are you talking about? What pumpkin carving challenge, Sean? Oh, on the Food Network. Yeah, you're probably right. Okay, I'm liking how this is turning out so far. I think I need to fatten up that base, though. Fatten up the base. <laughs> Sounds like a DJ. Turn this down. Now, I just wanted to point out, I do not 
Um, I do not have Sculptus Pro turned on my, my pinch brush because the pinch brush would, uh, it would be dynamically subdividing the geometry as it pinched and it wouldn't give us a, a, a nice pinch if you did it. If, if I've tried it before and it just doesn't work, it fights against itself. It's like creating, creating geometry and, and squeezing it together. It doesn't quite work kind of one or the other. Thanks, Ranjit. I don't know if that's how you say your name, but thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I'm wondering what's the difference between your versions of the brushes and the standard ones? Well, um, so a lot of these brushes are based off of brushes that other people have made as well. And it's just, I've taken some time to tweak them to my, to my setting, my standards, my, my liking, the, what, what I use the most. And, uh, and I wanted to make some new icons for them. So that's, that's what these icons are from. I just made them in Photoshop based off of what the brushes did. Because, um, when it's, when they're little small spheres like this, it's kind of hard to see what they do. So I actually made, a uh, brushes that show the profile of what it looks like what they're actually doing so this is just the standard inflate brush but with a new icon this one is um, a damien standard brush that's been tweaked so it's smoother um this is the regular chisel brush pinch this pinch brush is based off of the ma cut brush um, made by malicus the black and um just been tweaked a little bit this is the cloth brush by sk and the fill brush by sk and the polished brush by sk and then I have this insert multi mesh brush that has a bunch of primitives that are all based on quads and, uh, this hard and soft paintbrush. <clears throat> Is there no way to set it to generate and remove geometry based on the density? What do you mean, Steven? The, so the standard way, uh, that Sculptress Pro works is, um, the, it's based off a of brush size and I'm not a fan of that because sometimes I want to make my brush really large But I don't want it to break down the triangles and make the triangles very large So that that's how that's how it, the the Standard is but I've changed it. I you basically turn adaptive off and then it will work based off of um, Relative triangles, so it's relative to the world size rather than the brush size and I prefer that method because I know my, all my triangles will be, ex, you know, the same size as I'm working. Okay, I'm almost done here. It's looking pretty, pretty, pretty pumpkinish, but I want to, like I said, I want to, um, fatten it up a little bit and kind of squish the head part down okay <clears throat> yeah adaptive it's under the under the stroke menu so if you go under stroke and then um if this is grayed out that means you're currently on a brush that does not work with sculptures pro like move see how i'm on move brush um so if you go to stroke and you hold down shift for smooth then it will it will turn on and you can actually um you can turn adaptive size off right here. That's where it's at. And then you have subdivide size and unsub subdivide size. Now subdivide size is how the brush is going to um, subdivide it when you're normally using it and unsubdivide size. It's really confusing, but unsubdivide size is um, when you're using your smooth brush that that's how how it will affect it's it's kind of like two brackets if you think about it it's going to unsubdivide this side and then subdivide to this side and that's kind of where you need it to be so it's really crazy anyway all right uh, well welcome back cannabis <laughs> do you have any online tutorial on how you've been creating your personal brushes i don't um it's a good idea though uh but usually I will just get in there and just kind of tweak with the settings and you can get, you can find the settings underneath the brush menu right here. 
and there's all of this stuff that you can mess with like yeah there's just a whole bunch of stuff um modifiers is a good one and just to kind of just see and you can always start with a brush that you are thinking about and then you know like the fill like the clay tubes brush or something you can always start with a brush and then start tweaking the settings of it and make your own from that <clears throat> okay so um i'm going to save off a version so this is kind of my my standard pumpkin shape now let's do a save as um i have my twitch folder here my z tools we're going to call this adam noah jack 01 there we go all right okay let's see so now i want to start carving in the like the eyes and stuff like that it'll be kind of fun i'm, I'm looking forward to this and sometimes um if you're ever this is what I tell my students all the time. If you're ever afraid of moving forward, like you've gotten this far and you're like, I, I like this. I don't want to mess it up. Um, I, so what do I, you can do two things. You can save off a version and then move forward from there, or you can, or, and you can do both. Um, you can duplicate your sub tool like this and then hide the original and then, uh, just continue on like that. Okay. Yeah, save, save in increments. Yep. Okay, now Snake Hook Brush does work with Sculptress Pro where the Move Brush does not. Okay, so there's kind of a difference there. Um, so I'm going to grab the Snake Hook Brush. And for some reason, the Snake Hook Brush just has RGB turned on by default. So it, it colors what you move. So I always turn that off. Um, anyway, I'm going to just kind of just push this in just start to form those eyes and sometimes people like to know what i'm listening to and today i'm listening to um i'm listening to the midnight again i just i can't get enough of that band they're like a what is it called 80s synth synth I'm trying to remember what, what they're classified as. Synth something. <laughs> um, I'm grabbing and kind of tapping at the same time. I, I move my camera to be in the position that I want to put it in. And then um, I just kind of tap and push it in with the snake hook brush. Why didn't you use radial symmetry at the beginning of your work and then did not make general changes? Uh, because um, my pumpkin is not perfectly round. It has, it's, it's not round. See how it's kind of slanted from here and it's slanted there. I mean, I could have done the radial symmetry um, if it was, you know, and start it with, with it being perfectly round and then push it so it, it you know, has the base and the top. Uh, and then I also didn't want it to be perfect. I didn't want it to be perfectly um, symmetrical, all of the, the kind of lumpies everywhere. I wanted to make it, um, you, you want to have some chaos in there, you know? That's what makes things interesting. Hey, what's up, Sumerian? How you doing, man? Okay, so... I just kind of want this eye cavity to be kind of deep underneath here and then go to shallow out here. Oh, was it raining? It, it was raining uh, yesterday here. Was it yesterday? I lose track of my days. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. The, the midnight. It's really good. Hey, what's up, Charlie? Yes, I'm well. Thanks. <laughs> Summary in the UK, huh? Goodness. Synth. 
synth wave. That's what it's called, synth wave. So you can set it to, um, in Spotify, you can do like a, the midnight radio and it will find a bunch of like synth wave. And basically what it is, it's like, it's like new music that sounds like old music, I guess. Or what people think old music sounds like. <laughs> uh, when I say old, it's just the, it's the 80s. So it's not that old. I don't know. Am I that old? Okay. So let's build up. Don't answer that. Let's build up uh, some <clears throat> these these eyebrows. And I'm going to use the clay build-up brush. I don't use this clay build-up brush that often. So um, when I do, it's kind of fun. Hey, what's up, Brian? Welcome. And the reason I don't use the clay build-up brush that often is because it's very uh, it's very noisy. So I might end up not using it because I want to keep it semi-clean. Um, but you can see if I start to, you know, use it like this, it's very, it's very hard-edged and noisy. What is my recent favorite movie? Oh goodness, what is my recent favorite movie? Um, I'll have to think about that one. Because I've been, I've been getting into like TV shows more than movies. Like The Witcher and stuff like that. I think I need to go higher with this. <clears throat> yeah, Sculptress Pro is great because you don't run out of geometry. You know, it's, it's like if you have a Z remeshed mesh, and every time I say that, I feel like Dr. Seuss. If you have a Z-remesh mesh, um, you, you will run out of geometry. And so if you want to put like an eyelid or, in, or something like that, you're, you're most likely going to run out of geometry. And then in order to fix it, you're going to have to um, re-Z-remesh. Re <laughs> Is that a thing? Re-Z-remesh the whole the whole mesh and then you're going to lose some of the work that you've done so that's why i like sculptors pro because it's only going to um it's on it's only going to kind of you know affect the areas that you're you're using or uh sculpting on what did i think about the witcher tv show it was great it was good um i i don't know i have my opinions i'm i'm a huge huge fan of the witcher video game um i loved I love, love, love that game. And I love the actor that is Geralt. Um, they, they chose well. Well, he, he chose for them. He's just like, hey, I want to play Geralt. And they said, okay. So, um, but I'm not a fan of the actress that they chose to play. Um, oh, what is her name? Oh, my goodness. The other, the other, the girl, the main girl. So full detail in surface and then Z remesh and project the detail. Yeah. Um, I like, I like the actress they chose to play the, the young girl, but not, um, yeah, not the older, the gosh dang, help me out guys. Doesn't it become too much geometry at some point with sculptures? Not necessarily because um, because you can manage it. Yennefer, thank you. Yennefer, the actress that they chose to play Yennefer. I, she's a great actress. Don't get me wrong. And she, she did a really, really good job, but just the Yennefer in the, in the game is not any, it, it doesn't, it just kind of kept threw me off, throwing me off. So, um, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't the, the biggest fan of the actress choice on that one, but you know, Who's to complain? They made a Witcher show and it's awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, with your current NDA, can, can you say what you've been working on after the project is released or not? With that, you said in your Q&A, I'm intrigued. Um, I am working on, I, I take on very few um, contracts, contract jobs, because I spend most of my time with my students. 
Um, that being said, there's certain contracts that come, come along that I just can't turn down. And that was one of them. And I cannot say what it is right now, but I'm very, very excited about it. And it's, it's off for approval right now. So hopefully I'll hear back soon. <clears throat> the Witcher TV series is based on the books and not the game. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the, I mean, and I have not read the books. I'll be honest. I need to, that, that would be, I really need to. Um, but, um, yeah, maybe it's, uh, maybe she did a better job for the books than, but I'm just so used to the, the look of the actress they have in the games that just kind of threw me, you know? See, I can just build this up and smooth it down without, uh, without it affecting too much of my, what's the underlying stuff, you know? Just build it up, build it up. It's pretty cool. And I can also um, do what I usually do, which is use the, the move brush and just kind of pull it into, into position like this. Kind of blend it in down here. They change a lot. Is do you guys like the books better than the game? If if is anybody bought, uh, read the books and played the game? <laughs> Vorpine, I agree with you. Yeah, he's like perfect, right? Perfect. Did a really good job. Let's see. Um, is stylized sculpting easy compared to organic or... Have you ever worked on organic characters in the industry? Um, I, I think you're talking about realistic versus stylized um, because um, I, I feel like stylized is organic. Um, that it's organic versus hard surface, not stylized versus organic, just kind of verbiage there. But um, I, think, I think you're talking about stylized versus realistic. I have, I have done very few realistic characters in my, uh, in my career and I, there's, it's just a different approach. Um, whether it's harder or not, um, I don't know. It's, it's just a different, a different set of skills because you're getting down into the details. Um, and then with stylized characters, you're focusing more on the design and the simplification and exaggeration of things. Whereas in realism, you're, th you're, um, focusing more on like the detail and the texture work and that kind of stuff. So it's just kind of two, I wouldn't say one is harder or easier than the other. It's just different. All right. Kind of pinch the edge of this. I love the pinch brush. It's, it's probably one of my favorite brushes. It's just uh, keeps things super nice and clean and <clears throat> So I heard they're they're um, redoing is it Mafia three? And I played the heck out of Mafia three. Like, is it? I think it's three. The one, the one that's set in the, uh, I want to say, thirties or forties, with all those old-fashioned cars and everything. It just felt very Mafia-ish. The most latest one, um, where they were, they made it more modern, felt a lot less, uh, a lot less Mafia. You know, like the old-school Italian mobs kind of a thing. It, it, you know, kind of 
lost the whole feel for it for me, <laughs> I guess. Uh, what's the brand name of the microphone? It's, um, it's, uh, it's a sure, like, I'm, I don't even know what the, what the model number is on it. It's like, it's, it's a microphone they usually use to, um, record, uh, musical instruments and singing with. So it's one of those. Hey, Ashley's here. What's up, A-Cubed? How's it going? Thank you for gracing the, the stream. <laughs> Uh, Cosmonast is, is 3d artist good paid? Uh, it, the, you can be, uh, if you work for the right company and, and it's, it can pay well. <laughs> Cubed in the hizzy. <laughs> so, so Ashley's another streamer here on pixel logic. And uh, you must have heard me say snake hook again. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go with this inner inner crease or not, or just kind of keep the edge really thin. <laughs> McBobbies, yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> like the, like the, um, what is it called? Like the bat signal? The, the Sculptors Pro signal? Or not Sculptors Pro. Gosh dang it. Oh, where's my head? The snake hook signal. Oh. All right. Well. Now that I have this kind of blocked in, I can see that I need more, um, more, more stuff, more, uh, real estate down here to make room for that mouth. I made the eyes too big. <clears throat> so how's it going anyway, Ashley, how are things? How's the Corgi? Ashley's got the cutest little Corgi. Squish these up. Make them a little bit smaller. Uh, which is the best program for coloring? Um, ZBrush with the poly paint. That's what I like. Um, if you're going to be doing textures for game work, um, I suggest learning uh, Sculptress or Sculptress. Gosh, what's up with my, I was going to say Substance, Substance Painter. Monty boy. Oh yeah, Canadian Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Nice. Very cool. Okay, I'm just going to pull this around. I'm pumpkin pie right now. Nice. Ashley, do you have snow in your neck of the woods? Yeah, pumpkin pie is amazing. Or when does it when does it snow up there? You getting ready for it? The reason I ask is because it snows pretty, pretty soon here in Utah. <clears throat> what program, what program do you render your 3d models? Um, I, I kind of dance between several. Um, I like Keyshot a lot because there's actually a, a Keyshot version for ZBrush. I love that one. Um, I've rendered in Blender. And a new one that just recently came out not too long ago called Maverick. I really like that one a lot. I like renderers that I don't have to think about much. I can kind of just push my model into it, set up my lights, and, and it gives me good stuff. So 
So I like all of those. How do you smooth the big triangles? Um, well, eventually I will re, I will z remesh this, and it will, and then subdivide it, and it will smooth everything out. Hey, what's up, Mike? Yeah, do you know do you know Adam and Noah? Have I asked you that before? It does look like a Ryan Wood pumpkin. <laughs> you know, Ryan lives two houses down from Adam and Noah in in here in Lehigh. <laughs> so I'm sure I'm sure he's a big influence. Uh, I don't know if you have or not. He's a younger, younger guy. Teaches the, the, um, at UVU. Yeah. If you're looking for free, uh, you know, a free renderer, uh, try, try blender out. It's got two renders built in EV and, uh, cycles um and then if you're looking for pro software i would either go with i'd probably go with keyshot and the keyshot bridge we we um uh, illustrated or illustrated we rendered all of disney infinity with keyshot so all of the marketing shots were done with that hey jorge how's it going <clears throat> hey angry all right, let me get some eyeballs in here. All right, let's split these off. Hey Mike, are you still working on that MMO? Is that where you're at still? You've been on that team for a long time. <laughs> 13 years. Goodness. How's it going? Is it, is it still rocking? Nice, glad to hear, Jorge. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, yeah, Arnold's great. Like, you can't really go wrong with even like uh, RenderMan, you know? There's so many different renders. And it's not really about the render itself and how, how good, you know. Some renders make it easier than others as far as like how much uh, it takes to get a good looking render out of it. For the most part, you just want to look for a render that supports uh, HDRI, HD images. That's what I look for anyway. <clears throat> uh, when do you decide to turn symmetry off? Um, as as late in the game as possible. So, because you want you want to be able to use that use symmetry for as long as possible. Yeah. Like that size there. Okay. Is college education or courses needed or free online courses are enough to become a professional? Well, that depends on you and how, um, how, how fast you learn and things like that, because in this industry portfolio is king. So the, you know, the, the better your portfolio, the better chances you're going to have because you're essentially trying to um, show a company that you can do the work that they need you to do, right? They, they don't really care about um, a, a degree or anything like that. They just want to, they want to hire you to do the work. And uh, if you can show that you can do the work, then that's all they want to know. So whether you can do that through watching like YouTube videos, it, it's tougher because some of the YouTube videos are outdated and that kind of stuff. You don't know the, the proper workflows, that kind of thing. Um, 
and um and you don't need a college degree to to do it so um and it's that's kind of a nice segue into i i teach online uh i teach the 3d character workshop that's right above my head here and it's a it's a online workshop that you can go through and um i'm i'm proud to say that several of my students have gotten work after going through the through the workshop i never expected that to happen um but it has and one of my one of my students just barely told me that he got his first freelance gig pretty sweet Thanks, Sean. Um, do you have any advice for setting up a portfolio? Uh, yeah, Bente, pick pick what you want to do and kind of uh, the, the group of companies you would like to work for and do work that is similar, that similar looking to those companies. So say, for example, if you want to work for uh, Blizzard or Riot or something like that, make characters that look like their characters, but not specifically their characters. You don't want to do fan art of their stuff. You just want to um, do do characters that are stylized like theirs. With hand, if you're going to want to work on the WoW team, for example, you want to do hand painted textures. Um, basically, a portfolio is all about showing the company that you can do the work that they want you to do. Just like I said before, you don't you don't want to put stuff in there like you don't want to you know, model and render out a really nice looking chair if you're going to want to work in stylized characters for video games. You want to show stylized characters, right? I mean, that's an extreme example, but that's that's what a portfolio is, is pretty much for, unless you're a hobbyist and you just want to show people your work for fun. Um, a portfolio is, is for uh, trying to get work. All right. Um, yeah, I, I say Blizzard because everybody knows what I'm talking about usually. Um, yeah, they're, and they have a very specific kind of look to their art. Okay. <clears throat> Oops, let's go. I'm going to try something here. So this is this can be the a problem with Sculptress Pro, the, in the fact that it can get a bit dense. So um, yeah, I want to mask off this upper portion and then scale the lower portion to to make it larger. And being this dense, it's uh, it takes a while to blur the mask back and forth. It's easier when your mesh is lower density. Let's see if I can get this to work. I'm probably going to have to fix a lot. Let's see. Not bad. I kind of like that. Um... Any tips about websites where you can get decent feedback on the work you do in order to improve? Um, well, I mean, that's a tough one because the free groups are going to be on the internet and you, with the internet, the internet's full of jerks, right? And you're going to get, you're going to get people making fun of your work and not giving you good feedback. Um, and once again, not to, not to kind of toot my own horn or anything, but as if you if you do join the 3D character workshop, there's a forum in there, um, and I'll show it to you because it's amazing. But as as part of the workshop to get feedback, you can post your stuff in there, and we do a Q and A session every other Friday, 
but here's here's a bunch of the student work in there this is my top row uh and then yeah there's just work in progress characters happening all the time um so you can just post your work here and this is based off of a mouth lesson that i have in the course people practicing mouths and different things like that and see so you get some feedback happening um so anyway yeah super cool i'm i'm very very proud of that forum and how it's turned out <laughs> uh yeah if you can find a good discord group if you can find uh like 10,000 hours on Facebook ran by my friend Justin Gobi Fields that's a that's a decent one but again you know you you're going to you're going to have to deal with jerks <laughs> so all right I'm trying to decide if I want to do um if I want to do live boolean for this for the mouth and the nose to cut it out I'm not sure Thanks so much, Neil. I have not found a good Reddit yet. A good Twitch channel. Yay, like this one. <laughs> okay. Let's split this one. Have you created a set of IMMs for 3D printing? I have not. Um, somebody who has though is Eamon. You know, you know Eamon, Sean, right? He's another streamer on here. I don't know if he's streamed on here for a while, but on his Gumroad, he has a set of, um, he has a set of insert multi-mesh brushes that work well, like joints and stuff like that for 3D printing. <clears throat> and I apologize if I've missed any uh, questions. Feel free to ask them again if, if I've missed them. Yeah, he hasn't streamed on here for a while. So, at least maybe, or at least not that I know of, maybe he has. <clears throat> um, in Hall, uh, it's up to you. So, I, I, would I would recommend ZBrush Core Mini um, if you're interested in learning ZBrush eventually, because then you'll get used to the navigation and things like that. <clears throat> I use Blender more for like rendering and stuff like that. Hey, what's up, Harry? How's it going? Good, good, that's good. Good is good. See, I, I like, I like Sculptors Pro for this very reason. Just like, it's very, very loose. I can block stuff in really easily. Selling a ZBrush key on, on, um, I don't know that that one is tricky. Uh, you could always reach out. Well, gosh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I'd ever buy a ZBrush license off of eBay. That would be, that's kind of shady. <laughs> but I mean, if, if it's somebody who, who owns ZBrush that doesn't use it and they're just trying to sell it like legit, um, you know, it might be, it might be legit. And I believe um, Pixelogic can transfer licenses, so might be something to look into. Ooh. 
when is better to do the texture and what software. Um, well, I'm going to color this guy inside of ZBrush with poly paint. I like it a lot. But if I'm going to bring it, like I said earlier, if I'm going to bring it into a game engine, then I will usually use like Substance Painter or something like that, or just Photoshop. Depends on what I'm going to be doing with it. Sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> I think is that is that Russian? I, I can't quite understand. Yeah, not not for 40 bucks. Yeah, I wouldn't trust that for a second. Um, what's your favorite artwork you have ever made? Um, probably up until this point, it's probably been the Pirate Girl. Um, which is she's sitting right there, right right there. <laughs> Back there. Um, yeah, she's probably my favorite. And but I have a new favorite I'm working on coming up. I'm super excited about it. Um, I, I'm hoping to have it done before, well, before the end of next month. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Yeah, that's my second favorite is my, my uh, cowboy riding on a dinosaur and he's right, he's right there. <laughs> I only have four months learning digital sculpting. Do you think it's okay if I take your workshop? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, any, any hints? Um, I, I can't, if I gave any hints away, it would be, yeah, I can't. <laughs> oh, I guess, well, yeah. I'm recording it and I'm hope, hoping it's going to get a new, um, it's going to be a, a, a new, a new product. Hey, what's up, David? Hey, Rose Forest. Um, should I get the ZBrush trial? Uh, sure. <laughs> Gary Busey. <laughs> How'd you guess? <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. Um, I'm going see this little, like, hanging bit this is perfect for sculptress or for uh the snake hook brush and sculptress pro so we're gonna try it here because it's going to generate the geometry as i pull it out see i never run out of geometry beautiful thing And if you get, if you start to get too thin, you can always use the inflate brush. Just kind of inflate it to give you a little bit more surface area to pull from. Uh, Alagos, um, probably not, um, because it wouldn't be, uh, it wouldn't be too fair for the rest of the people on the stream. So yeah, I kind of avoid like looking at other concepts or, um, you know, looking at portfolios while I'm streaming. Cause I'm just, I'm trying, I, I apologize. But I'm just trying to get this, get this guy done. 
in the in the amount I have in the amount of time I have. How do you smooth out the rough spots from where your hand isn't so steady? That's my biggest issue. Um, <clears throat> so the the smoothest um, the the smoothest model you'll get is a low resolution subdivided mesh. So eventually, what I'll do is I'll end up um, usually I'll end up z remeshing this guy, or you know just use this, the combination of smooth brush and uh, that to just kind of get the surface smooth. But um, I don't know if I'll do that with this guy because he's so complex. But we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. Um, but yeah, like that's what I was saying. The the smoothest mesh you're going to get is a subdivided mesh. Okay, and it looks like we have a little tiny guy hanging off the back here, just a little one, doing something like this. Whoop. Okay. And how maybe, uh, maybe eventually, maybe soon. I don't like that one. Year. Well, I'm like, like I said, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to introduce new products. And part of the reason for that is to make them more affordable. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying a few different things just to see how, how that would work out. Cause I know it's a, it's kind of steep for a lot of people. So Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> it's it's kind of difficult sometimes because I don't want to um, I don't want to create too much maintenance on on my part. You know, I don't want to spread myself too thin. <clears throat> Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Jamie. Yeah, let's, uh, you know, what a, a thing we can do to check, I did make a stem a little too tall. Let's, I'm gonna grab this. This move elastic brush is, is really nice when you have something like that and you wanna just kind of move it around with a large fall off. Looks pretty good. How long does it take to master the program? Uh, Daniel, it takes, it depends on how fast you learn. Honestly, it's just like learning anything. Some people learn fast and some people takes a while. Hey, what's up, Brian? How you doing, man? I haven't talked to you for a long time. I used to work with Brian at uh, Sony. Crazy. Blast from the past. How long has it been? Like. I would say mm, 12 years. <laughs> yeah, 10,000 hours, I guess. Uh, that's, I don't know how much I, I buy into that whole philosophy. <laughs> okay, let's see. So what I was gonna do is we can take this, since it's in spotlight, I can turn the opacity way down and just kind of float it over the top. <clears throat> and then kind of sort of line this up underneath. 
and see how well I like to line up the eyes and then just kind of loosely judge. Yeah, so I could pull this out a little bit further. Are there any new materials or techniques that you're planning to add to your course in the near future? Um, I'm, I'm always adding new techniques and things. Uh, the, but as far as new materials, are you talking about like new learning materials or like materials to apply to your models? I think you're talking about new. <clears throat> so Quicks, are you in my course right now? Because I just added about uh, 12, was it, I, I'm trying to think, eight new lessons earlier this year, plus an interview. And we're doing a, um, we're doing a uh, student challenge right now. Okay. 2021 features. Um, Maybe there's, I mean, if there's anything that goes kind of outside the workflow of uh, the stylized characters that I teach, I don't, I don't typically add, I won't add things just for the sake of adding them, I guess, is my, my thoughts. All right, I'm going to add, I want to add some texture back here. Uh oh, don't crash. Oh, crap. <laughs> we crashed. Crash. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, hold on a second. I got to put this over here because I, I have NDA stuff going on and I can't have you guys seeing it. <laughs> so hold on. One second. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Gosh dang it. It does have an autosave feature, but it didn't save it quite often or quite enough. I have to redo some of this stem. <laughs> Hold on, let me look and see if there's another one. Hold on one second. Uh, let's see, 449, 440, da da. Nope, 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 no. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the latest one. Hmm. All right. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> oh, geez. No worries, no worries. I'll just do it again. Won't take too long. We're, we're only at an hour. I've been working on this guy for an hour, so not a big deal. All right. When you updated 2021, did your custom interface transfer smoothly? Uh, yeah. Yep, it did. Okay, I'm going to make this lower half large again, or more before I go and mess with that stem again. <clears throat> All right. There we go. That's better. It does. That's always how I think about it. 
Um, let me see what my, just so you guys know, I'm going to show you what my quick save settings are set to. So, um, maximum duration is every 20 minutes. So you can set this to 15. Now I'm in preferences, um, quick save, and then your there's, I don't know what the restoration is. And you can choose to skip the history, which will make your file sizes smaller. And um, you can set how many quick save files you have. So if you have a smaller hard drive, you can set this to like, uh, like three instead of 10. That just means it's going to save 10 versions before it starts saving over the first one again. Um, and then if you want to, you can delete all of your quick save files out of your, off your hard drive if it's getting full. How do you avoid crash, crashing it? I had to redo the model several times. Um, sometimes it depends on what you're actually doing. There's there's uh, functions and things that you do that um, are prone to crashing more than others. Um, I don't know what was going on with what I was just doing. Usually I was like close up in the camera and trying to do some Sculptress Pro thing. I don't know what, why it crashed. I don't know. That was the first crash I've had in, in months, months and months. I haven't, you know, knock on wood, but um, I have not had a crash in a long time. I don't, I, I don't think I've crashed much during streams either. Um, yeah, it's been really stable. Um, how young do you think people are when they usually start 3D modeling? Whenever they get interested in it. Honestly, I have students that are over the age of 70 and I have some that are in like middle school, like young, young. So. It depends on when you get interested in it. There's, there's no like, you know, you're this age, so you should be doing this. It's, uh, it's kind of like, I, I always equate this to learning a musical instrument. So like, for example, learning guitar, there's a lot of people that will pick up a guitar late in life and there's people that will learn it early and uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay, let's do this again but faster. <laughs> I got to load my, uh, my texture in here. <clears throat> that got, that got lost. All right. Yeah, Quicks is great. Um, and some people are hobbyists and some people are hardcore. I want to get a job doing this. So it completely, you know, it's, it's across the board, what you want to do. It's up to you. And, and I also say, um, you know, don't, don't compare yourself to others. You're on your own journey and you want to compare yourself to yourself. I mean, sure. You can be inspired by other people and say, well, that's where I want to be eventually. But don't, don't be intimidated by it because they're on their own journey and you're on your own journey. So um, I wouldn't really, I mean, it's hard not to. I, yeah, it's easier said than done, right? But that being said, it's, you know, try not to compare yourself to other people while you're doing this. And Right, Donald? There you go. I'm just now really getting into it. And that's, that's awesome. Super cool. I mean, there's, there's people that do, they want to get into it for different reasons, right? There's like, uh, why isn't this working? Oh, I know why. Spotlight projection. That'll get you every time. Um, you know, like, uh, so say there's people that have played D and D for their entire life like me, and they just want to start to learn how to model and sculpt their own little figurines. That's, that's quite possible um, in today's day and age and just learn how to make your own figurines and 3d print them and make them for your games. And there's nothing wrong with that. Right? So, all right, I'm going to save this guy just in case. All right. <clears throat> What's the resolution? Uh, this really doesn't have a resolution right now. Um, I, I don't, well, let's put it this way. I don't pay attention to resolution until I'm doing my final model for uh, in, in a game or wherever I'm taking it. Right now it's just uh, sculpture geometry. So um, right, right now it's, it's like 152,000 points. Yeah. 
yeah comics legend that that's um yeah yeah student challenges that's that's uh, a good point but i mean that that being said you sh you should still think about it like um <clears throat> you know you're comparing it to yourself but the student challenges are there to see where your skills could go you know you always want to have that because you don't want to uh, model in a box right you want to see what other people are doing um let's see da, da, da. turn this down i don't i can't remember where we were at with this yeah a little lower okay how do you do that i mean how can you sculpt your model and then make it seem clear and smooth um well you can see the see the resolution right here that's that's where it's at i'm not really paying attention to it too much how does an 11 to 18 year old get so much money um well yeah that's tricky until they get a job unless their their parents are you know well to do and they're just like here johnny here's some money to go spend on training um i i have high school students in my uh in my workshop because it it you know like it like i said it depends on where they're at in their life <laughs> yeah sell your pokemon cards All right, this is getting a little, little ridiculous here. Well, you can you can actually smooth, smooth Sculptress Pro meshes right out of existence. See, like like this, zoop. <laughs> they just you just smooth them out of existence. So be careful. But my son's friend um he 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 has a, a job and he saved up and joined the course and whoops i think i see i guess it depends on where your priorities are too you know okay i'm going to turn sculptors pro off and inflate this without without generating new topology I'm fighting this end right here you know what's going on let's just get rid of it try it again You're 13? Yeah. You'll get there. You'll get there. Don't don't be in a rush either. I mean, the fact that you're here watching is is like the first step, right? Okay, let's put put those uh details back in. Sorry, let me, I'm just, I'm just focusing here for a second. Sorry, you guys have to watch me do this over again. <laughs> Save your work, people. Been modeling since I was 11. I've got experience to some extent, but never, never finished products. Yeah, finished 
Finished project projects are a big thing. I started when I was about, oh, gosh, how old was I? I want to say 28. Uh, that, that was when uh, 3D was kind of brand new. Because I was messing around and like, there's a program called True Space at the time. And uh, Corel had a 3D program of theirs and and then I went to school for it and I learned how to use uh, Softimage and Alias Wavefront and 3D Studio version 3 that was before 3D Studio Max there we go that was fast all right Bryce I didn't use Bryce too much I know what it, I know of it, but I didn't use it much because that's a, you know, that's a terrain maker, right? Making mountainous terrains and things. <clears throat> and I used one called Mirai and Nendo. Um, in my professional career, I used 3D Studio Max and Maya, uh, Softimage, which was called XSI at the time. Um, yeah, I think I've used most, mostly all of them. <laughs> R4, yeah, it was on R3, David. <laughs> oh, goodness. That was a long time ago. In DOS. Is your UI available online? Yes, it is visual. Um, it is at uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can head over there and just scroll down and find it. Um, I give it away for free on my website. So if you go over to 3D Character Workshop, like right here, if you want to learn more about the workshop, you can click right here. Um, if you scroll down to about here, you can grab my brushes for free in this user interface and the ruler file. It comes with a ruler to help you uh, measure your stuff. SolidWorks, I never did. I almost had to learn SolidWorks for uh, Disney Interactive, but I never did. Getting, we, were, we were close. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right Jamie oh man yeah I've tried my box for sure I've tried them all I don't know that there's you know let's see one I have never tried is like Mirai I've, I have not tried Mirai because it was a it's a um it's mainly for film and I'm a game guy so yeah Ilian um if you're interested in combining 3D and 2D you should check out uh uh, Mike, what is his name? Mike Thompson. Um, he does phenomenal mixture of 3D and 2D. He does uh, Marvel stuff and yeah, really. Yeah, I remember Kai's power tools. Yep, in Maya. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's get the smile in here. What are we at? Uh, hour and 24 minutes. Okay, let's get the smile in here. <clears throat> because I want to get these these bumps going on that is this smile is is nuts so let's I was going to do it with the mask and then kind of um, extrude it in we'll see how that goes okay but I want to make sure I have enough geometry where the where the smile is going to go um do I ever do one-on-one -on -one classes not really no Um, I just, I just prefer having, um, just Q and A sessions during the week it works out well for me. That way I can keep, continue to make more content that more people can watch. Okay.
what is getting your 3d models 3d print action model ready advanced i don't understand the question are you asking if if putting joints and things like that in your models if that's really advanced and yes it's very advanced if that's what you're looking to get into okay i'm yeah i'm gonna focus here in how for a bit um i'm turning off symmetry and i'm just gonna start masking this mouth out um you know what i could do just to kind of cheat a little bit is i could do this just to kind of give me a guide is I can kind of get this in place. Let's see, this nose is here. Mm. Let's see. I just, I just want to get the front teeth to, and just paint them on the surface. Now for this, um, I'm going to hit hard paint and I'm going to uh, actually turn spotlight projection back on. Whoops. Okay, so then I can stamp down to the surface. I'm gonna turn Sculptress Pro off and just paint this down to the surface right here. Oop. Okay. <clears throat> now make sure I turn it back off and get this back out of the way and turn the opacity back up and i don't know that i would like that or not we'll see <laughs> oh man maybe maybe not <laughs> Yeah, I don't know that I like that. I'm just going to do it by hand. Okay. This is going to take a while is all. Let's see what the mask looks like. Okay. Okay, so I don't have enough triangles to get a really tight mask. And I've reached the bottom of my scope, my subdivisions. So what I need to do now is scale him up in space to get more triangles. So if you look, um, if you look, he's, he's pretty small in my scene right here. Okay. So what I can do is mask this ruler off and then, um, center my gizmo in the head and then turn on this transpose all selected subtools. I can scale him up quite a bit. And then just kind of set him down here. <laughs> Thanks, Visual. Okay. And I'm going to do a save as and save this as 03. And then... And now, um, since... The size of triangles within Sculptress Pro is based off of your scene size. Now that we've scaled it up, it will essentially make the triangles much smaller. Okay, so um, I'm actually going to want to crank these back up. Otherwise, I risk crashing. See that? Um, they're pretty they're pretty small now even though I cranked this up to almost back to one Let's see. Let's go back down Yeah, let's do something like that Okay, I'm just gonna kind of paint smaller triangles where this uh, this mouth is going to go Just so I have enough resolution that when I make my mask, it's not gonna be uh, blurred how do you have the camera while having the cursor on the mesh um art the how you do that is you use right click navigation with your pen 
Um, so I have right click assigned to my front button on my on my pen. And I have it assigned, yeah, I have it assigned to right click. And then I have the back button assigned to my custom menu. Um, it's the custom menu comes with my user interface for free if you go grab it on 3D Character Workshop. And so if I push the back button, it will pop my menu up underneath my mouse wherever I move it. Okay, so that's, that's super nice. And then um, right click, I can be zoomed in on my model really close. And I don't have to go over here into the gutter in order to use it. I can just hover and click that right mouse menu. And it's called right click navigation. And Paul Gabry at Pixelogic swears by it. I, they're called the right click army. And that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's part of that navigation. So I would totally do that. All right. So, okay. Now let's turn symmetry back off and just kind of work on uh, work on the smile here. Get a really small brush. I like how it has these two these two teeth that are quite large right here. <laughs> kind of like, I don't know, like vampire teeth that are really close together. And then it has this kind of crack that goes up high. Now what you can do is draw a line like this and then hold down control plus alt and subtract away from your mask. So you can get a smaller, tighter line like that. And I'm just kind of looking at the top teeth first and then I'll cut the bottom ones in after that. got to zoom out to make sure <clears throat> I'm getting it because I'm measuring I'm like coming down from the eye and kind of seeing where where this ends not getting it exact just close and then what you can do well I'll show you but what you can do is use um mass or uh, edge loop mask border which is something i use all the time okay one two and then there's this little one Why don't you paint it instead of mask again? I mean, that way you don't need to press control all the time. Um, because I'm going to be pushing it in. I'm not going to leave it as paint. Um, and I, I want to mask it. I mean, I could, and then I could use uh, mask by intensity, which is, uh, you know, something I could totally do. Okay. So this is going to go clear up here and then down. Looks like I ran out of geometry up there. See, I went out. As soon as I went into the lower resolution area, you can see how it just kind of lost the edge right there. So I'm going to go further out, down a bit over here. There we go. No worries, David. Thanks for hanging out and watching. We have almost 300 people watching across all streaming platforms. So I don't know if you guys can tell from the chat above, but I'm streaming to Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook all at the same time. So combining all those viewers together, we're almost at 300, which is crazy to me. Hey, 
<laughs> Brian. <laughs> On the Amiga, yeah, I had an Amiga 500. I wasn't sculpting at the time. I was painting, doing illustration stuff. Did they have a sculpting program on there? Sculpt. There, yeah, they had animation on there. And they, like video toaster. Remember that thing? Video toaster. And this goes clear up here, doesn't it? <clears throat> okay, there we go. 500, 400. Wait, you had a 500, 400 and fight. What does that mean, Brian? <laughs> And I had a Commodore 128. That was my first computer. And I wanted an Amiga so bad. I couldn't afford it until I got into college. Oops. Oh, a 5,000. I was like... 500, 400, 500. <laughs> what? Okay. Hey, Marion. I'm doing well, thank you. Yeah, I loved my 128, but the 128 side of things was quite disappointing because nobody wrote anything for it, right? Yeah, it was a fast, fantastic time for games back then. I used to play this game called Killed Until Dead. <laughs> it was an electronic arts game where it was like a murder mystery. That was a fun game. All right, let's see. CG, I'm doing well, thanks. Um, are you using a tablet to draw on? If so, any suggestions for affordable ones? I have a 2000, I have one from 2006 and it's bad. Um, so I, yeah, I get this question often. Um, and my answer is get the best tablet that you can afford and you don't need to have a Cintiq. Okay. I'm on a Cintiq. This is a 27 inch Cintiq, but I, I kept trading up to get this. Okay. So, um, th but it's, it's not necessary. It is not necessary. All you need is a a tablet or even a, a screen, if you want to go that route, something with pressure sensitivity. That's all you need. <clears throat> oh yeah, text adventures like Zork. Zork was great. <clears throat> Monkey Island on 11 discs on the Amiga? Holy crap. No way. I think I played that on IBM. Along with like uh, King's Quest. Remember King's Quest? King's Quest and like Mist was, I mean that that came later, but that was also another good one. <laughs> you remember you remember waiting so you know when people complain about load times right now you know i like this game but i can't stand the load times i'm like oh man you didn't have to swap out 12 discs and and wait 30 minutes to play a game <laughs> i have no sympathy for people complaining about load times <clears throat> Do 
Do you guys remember those uh, Commodore magazines? Commodore 64 magazine, Commodore magazines, and they would all, always come with like a, a couple pages in the back of some code that you could type in and have it do something, right? And um, my mom watches these. Hi, mom. And my mom was a, a, a legal secretary and, and she could type fairly quickly. Um, and she typed one of those in like completely. And <laughs> it just kind of reminded me of that, uh, of, of like um, Christmas story when, you know, the kids just waiting all that time to get the thing in the mail from, from uh, the radio show. You know, it took him so long. And when it finally got there, it was just a stupid ad. It was almost that bad. It was like she got done like spending hours typing this code in to the Commodore and it like just drew some silly pixel art picture, you know? <laughs> and it's like, oh, I'm sorry you went through this, mom, <laughs> for this. You think like a couple pages of code would write like the next Metroid game or something and it ends up just like drawing one little stupid picture. Oh goodness, those were the days. <laughs> CD Utopia, that is on you, my friend. That is on you. I give you the tools to become a great 3D character modeler, but actually doing it is on you. You know, I have, I shouldn't say I have, I should say uh, f there have been over 1,600 people purchase my course over the last three years. And there have been a lot of successful artists come out of there, but there have also been a lot of people that have ghosted it and not done anything with it, which I don't understand. You know, they invest all this, this money and uh, time and effort. And it's like, I don't, I don't, I, I think life gets in the way or Maybe they realize it's not what they want to do after all, you know, something like that. But, um, yeah, it's completely up to you. And there's a lot of people that have personalities that aren't very vocal and they're just kind of on their own private journeys too. And, and I understand that. Oops. That's true, Giovanni. Not... Yep, has not been better said. <laughs> it's true. Actually doing the work. That's true as well. And you know, that's, that's kind of why my, my course is kind of unique in that regard where it's, um, it's lifetime access because the, this is a journey, right? If you, if you want to learn this stuff, it's a journey. It's like learning the guitar. You can't, you can't learn one song and then you're like, okay, I know how to play the guitar now. You're like, well, you know how to play that one song, but you, do you really know how to play the guitar? You know, um, and there's students in there that have made, you know, several several characters and they keep going they'll, they'll leave for a while come back you know and it's great it's great i love it okay i want to thicken some of this stuff up <clears throat> i've really enjoyed it i have to say I've, I've enjoyed watching people's journeys and i i get so much pleasure out of seeing students be successful after you know, being students in there. Okay, this is close enough. I might, I might pull these eyes down and make them bigger eventually, but I think I'm gonna... Got 15 minutes left, let's see what we can do. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, we have this masked area right now. And what we can do is there's this, um, this button that's called edge loop mask border right here. And you can find that under tool geometry edge loop mask border. Okay. And when we click it, what, what it's going to do is it's going to make a new poly group 
out of what you have masked and then it's going to put a an edge loop around the entire area okay yeah sean that that's so true i always i always tell my kids this too um i always say the the hardest part of doing anything is getting started right that's the hardest thing to do and i i learned something super valuable from uh my great friend and old roommate uh alan too he he is a lead designer over at Warner Brothers now, but um, when he was he was writing some scripts and things, and he's just like, man, um, it's hard to get started. And he said, I can't remember where he got it from, but he he read somewhere that said, just do something for 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. If, even if you don't want to do it, just say, you know what, I don't really want to do this today, but... I'm going to do it. I'm going to give it 10 minutes because usually that's the thing that it's like a freight train, right? It's hard to get started, but once you're going, it's kind of hard to stop. So just, even if you don't want to do it, just try it for 10 minutes. And if you still don't want to do it after that 10 minutes, you know, then you can think about doing something else, but give anything 10 minutes at least. Okay. So I'm gonna get really close here and I'm gonna save this in case it crashes again. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm gonna try and hover over one of these faces and I'm gonna say extrude polygroup all. And then try and grab one of these faces and push it in like this. Cool, that'll work. Now what I can do too is just kind of come along and um, smooth this out really, really lightly. But I don't want to have Sculptors Pro turned on, I don't think. Let's see what happens. Maybe I do. Uh, why can't I use Sculptress Pro with Subdivision when I use Smooth Brush? Uh, because Sculptress Pro, um, well, because Subdivisions work with quads and Sculptress Pro is triangles, right? So if you look at the mesh, it's made up of triangles mostly. And um, Subdivisions work by subdividing a quad, a square face into four. So it's like, that's why it's called subdividing because it's taking a face and multiplying it in or subdividing it in four different faces. And then if you subdivide again, it's taking each one of those faces and um, like subdividing those by four. So it keeps going down and down and down. And if you're trying to subdivide all these little triangles into four, it's going to crash ZBrush. It just doesn't work. So you, yeah, subdivisions and Sculptress Pro do not go hand in hand. If you want to use subdivision levels, you're going to have to Z-remesh this whole thing into back to quads and back to low resolution quads if you want that to work. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm not going to Z-remesh this because it's way too detailed and it would get chunky. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. But I'm going to try and smooth this out with Sculptress Pro pro turned on and see what it does for me. This one, I just want to smooth out these edges and knock them back. I have to use remesh and project the details. Yes. So duplicate your mesh, Z remesh it, and then subdivide it and then project the details. All right, cool. Then this just cuts cuts the hard edges off of there by smoothing it. I can turn up the intensity a bit. Yeah, I'm liking how this is looking. <laughs> Go deeper. <laughs> I'm gonna color. I'm gonna I'm gonna put put some color in there. So um, I don't want to take it too deep. 
I want it, I want it manageable. <clears throat> I'm a little bit confused these days. I'm an animator, but I do sculpting too. But these, I love sculpting a lot, mostly character art. Um, so yeah, Jamie, I'm, th I, I am thinking of it as hollow, but I'm not going to hollow it out. I'm just going to fake it. Um, I'm not going to take it that far. Um, uh, anyway, uh, Richard Richardson, the, um, I'm, I'm also an animator myself. I was animation professional for five years of my career. And if you, you should try everything you should try. If you want to try animation, you should try it. You know, um, you don't, don't feel like, uh, you know, don't, don't feel like you need to like choose one thing. It's, it's a lot of, you know, back and forth and just, just, it's just fun. Yeah, I kind of miss animating. I want to get back into it. Yeah, when I worked with uh, Brian, Brian keeps talking on here. When I worked with him, I was, a, I was an animator for Sony working on Warhawk. I would also uh, rig. I was uh, doing rigs too. Yep, I rigged, I rigged a lot of the vehicles in Warhawk. Remember that, Brian? <laughs> yep. Warhawk. All right. So I'm going to turn off symmetry now and just start to go crazy with making, I like how he's got, I know it's perspective, but I like how he's got one eye that's all small and the other one's big. I'm going to keep that and exaggerate this eye, make it asymmetrical. And I need to make his uh, nostrils too. <clears throat> you ever start a course on rigging, let me know. You know, the thing, the thing about um, rigging is very few people want to do it. Very few people want to want to learn it. So it's not very, as far as uh, doing a, because I, a, a good friend of mine tried, um, he, he rigged all of the characters for Animation Mentor. And he tried to make a course on rigging and it's, it just didn't work because there weren't enough people interested. You remember that, Brian? Of course you do. <laughs> so, Brian, I was going to tell you, um, some fans, um, they, uh, they pieced back together Warhawk online and they're running a game online of Warhawk. <laughs> uh, I thought that was pretty cool. They like it well enough to try and make it work. So, um, but as far as, as far as rigging goes that if, if you want a job in the game industry, you should learn how to rig characters because it's a highly sought after position. Not, not very, not many people like to do rigging because it's, it's part programming, it's part art. Um, and it's, but it's very much wanted. They're called technical artists, TAs. And there is an art to it for sure. Yeah, it's definitely not easy. And it's a, I'm not going to lie. It's a pain in the butt. <laughs> that's, that's why a lot of people don't want to, don't like to do it. Let's see. Nice. And there's, there's some studios like Pixar where they expect you to rig your own models as a character modeler. Had a couple friends that work there and yeah, they, they expect them to rig their own, which would be fun, but, um, also they, they have a different like in-house rigging utilities. So I'm not, I'm not sure how easy or difficult it is to rig the characters in there. 
But that being said, Brian Tyndall from Pixar that writes uh, a website called Hippiedrome. If you want to learn like topology and how you should lay your topology out for your faces, you should check that out. Hippiedrome. <clears throat> okay. So there's the, the nostrils and we can do the same thing. We can just go to edge loop mass border. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. <clears throat> yep, Python scripting. It used to be, uh, what was the other script tool? I know the other script scripting better than Python. Okay, let's grab. Okay. Mel script, thank you. <laughs> yep, mel scripting. I know I know mel scripting. But just enough to be dangerous. It's mainly uh, you know, just having a the the mail script listener open and then just copying what i see into scripts to have it have it execute almost like macros that's all i do I just fake it because <laughs> i'm an artist i'm not a programmer at all all right i'm liking how this guy's turning out let's get some color in here hey hey i said hey 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 I still want them tucked under under there. Yeah. Okay. Let's switch this over to skin shade four, my favorite. Not skin. Oh, what the heck is that? Sketch. Not sketch. Where did it go? Where what happened to my skin shade? It's like when I, I replaced it with matte cap and it just went away. Hold on a second. Uh, where is it? There's flat color, zebra. Well, goodness, I'm gonna have to go find it again. Well, tell you what, we'll just do it this way. Save as. And then, no, it's not crashing. It's, uh, I need projects. I'm just going to reload my ruler file and it comes with skin shade four already loaded. No, it's ske sketch five. What the heck? Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I'm laughing into my microphone, making it a little breathy. Oops. Let's go load tool. There we go. All right. Back in business. All right, let's get this guy colored up. It's going to be bright orange. Maybe grab this color. There we go. <clears throat> oh, I was on the eyes. Um, let's see. Do you shade and texture in ZBrush, Maya, and Mar I've never used Mirai um, to your character. And I, I don't use... I don't use Maya to do my texturing, really. I use it to do UVs and retopology and rendering, but I don't use it to do texture with. I use Substance Painter usually and Poly Paint mixed with Poly Paint. Okay, let's get some. So this is my, I always like to start out with a base color. Turn off Sculptors Pro. This is my airbrush, which is just a soft paintbrush. And then we can just come in here with some dark. And I'm just kind of faking some ambient occlusion right now. When you play D&D, &D, do you get a lot of requests to sculpt, sculpt people's characters? Um, no, I mean, yes and no. Uh, they don't really want, <laughs> they work in the game industry too. The people I play D&D &D with. 
and they don't they kind of know that I'm I do it all day and they they don't want to take advantage <laughs> but I have I have offered in the past you know so let's see want to lighten up this area right here so with the airbrush I just go super subtle with it yep thanks Jorge I just saved not too long ago <clears throat> And this yellow is bright. So if you're wanting to eye drop colors off of your concept, you need to have the ring showing. See this ring right here? By pushing Z or Z on your keyboard. Um, yeah, you'll want to, to do that. Otherwise, it'll grab the, the background color, which is this dark gray, and you don't want that. And a lot of this is coming from lighting, so I don't want to paint too much of it in, but I like the variation in color, so I'm just kind of painting some of that in. Yeah, see there's a there's a light source coming from top left here. See it's catching all these teeth, so I don't know how much of this I want to paint in. Kind of keep him orange. And see how it has like this textured look to it. There's another thing you can do is um, you can you can select these alpha, <clears throat> these different alphas like this one, and you can kind of grab one of these colors like this dark brown, and then when you paint, it'll kind of leave these streaks. See that? Like that. You can. You can streak it. Thanks, Henry. Appreciate it. All right, let's get. Um, uh, no, there's not really emissive texture inside of ZBrush. That's what it's called, emissive. Okay, let's grab that and just kind of fill this eyes eye area in. I'm going to turn this alpha off for a minute. For presentation, can we use polypaint model in Marmoset? Yes, you can. But that being said, it depends on if you're, if you're looking for a job, you will want to actually uh, bake everything down to textures. Um, because polypaint on high resolution models is that's not really used for anything other than illustration. So just be careful about that. Okay, I'm gonna turn the alpha back on that I had because I kind of want these streaks. Um, I turn Sculptors Pro off. I don't. I don't paint with that on. I like painting on inside of ZBrush a lot because it does remind me of painting on minis. Like, you know, like 
Warhammer minis or D and D minis, something like that. Cause it's literally like holding your character in your hand and painting on it. So I like it so much. I'm going over time. <laughs> Another cool thing about um, doing, you know, pushing in uh, like a mouth like this and nostrils like this is it keeps the polygroups. See the polygroups stuck in there? So you can use that to your advantage. So I can grab this, this internal mouth color right here. And then if I have my gizmo showing, I can hold down control and tap on that internal uh, polygroup and then fill it. So if I go to this hard paintbrush, fill that area, and now his mouth is filled. Um, and if I want, I'm gonna in, I'm gonna go back a little bit. I can blur the mask a little bit, so it's kind of blurred in there. Blur it the opposite direction a little bit, and then fill it. And I won't have such a hard edge in there. There we go. It's looking better. Let's do the same thing here. I'm gonna go a little bit darker on the nostrils. There we go. If we have a missed material in ZBrush, that will be cool though. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Yep, and then I'll just I'll just kind of continue going through here, and um, you know, just start just start working through. Do I offer a free scholarship? No, I don't. I mean, it's 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 a really well, it's a relatively cheap workshop when it when compared to a college. It's like pennies on the dollar when it, when you compare it to a college. So it's just not worth it, you know. It's not, uh, it's not an affiliated course or anything like that. It's, you don't, you don't need a student loan. You know, you don't need, you just need to save, save some, a bit of money and join us. That's what I can say to, about that. <laughs> I want, I want people invested. How's that? I want, I, I want people to get in there and actually do something with the, with the, the material. So. Am I self-taught? Uh, for the most part, um, I did go to the Art Institute of Seattle back in 1998. Um, but at that, at that time, I was kind of teaching the instructors myself. I was, I was writing a, I was contributing to a book uh, called 3D, I'm trying to remember, 3D Creature Workshop. That may or may not be where I've got the name from. <laughs> but I was writing a, a book while I was going to school How to, how to model characters in 3D Studio Max with patches. There are people who watch you right now and who can't pay in Africa. I know, and I wish there was something I could do about that. I don't, I don't have the answer. Thanks, Joss. Okay, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a highlight. I'm, I can't, I'm gonna bring this into a rendering program and render out the blast of light coming from that side and just really blast it out and then, uh, and then finish coloring these eyes, so. Yep, I'm trying to make the workshop more more affordable. I promise. Um, I still haven't raised the price. It's been the same price for the last three years. But I'm thinking about, I'm doing some things uh, coming up that um, hopefully will help with that. All right, everybody, I think I'm going to wrap this up for today.
still need to do the eyes and that kind of stuff but i'll get this rendered and maybe i'll do some texture work and some surface work and <clears throat> all right and thank you adam for letting me use your concept uh this was a fun one so all right everybody have a wonderful week and we will see you next time and as always you can grab my brushes, my user interface, and my ruler file for free over on 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You can use all these brushes and everything that I use. So, um, yep. So thank, thank you everyone very, very much. Yeah, it's 299 people, one person away from 300. I always, I always love to try and hit that 300 mark, which is insane to me. I can't believe so many people are watching on a Monday. But thank you so much and happy sculpting, everybody. All right, take care. Have a good one.